Welcome back to another episode of the new Destiny character. Today is day two, of course. The previous episode was the beginning of this epic journey and we made some good amount of progress. We completed all the Earth's story missions and finished off with a tough run of the Devil's Lair Strike, leaving our new character at level 8 with a 36 light level. Today we're picking up where we left off and we get quite a bit done today. We even find ourselves inside of some PvP gameplay, facing off against guys much more geared and leveled than myself. So you guys are in for a great episode. Let's get right into it. Long before our return to the moon in Shadowkeep, we originally came here six years ago to learn more of Crota, son of Oryx, and eliminate the threat of his followers. After defeating Devil's Lair as a two-man team and getting some decent upgrades, Huge and I were more than prepped for what awaited us on the moon. Whew. Man, do you guys miss Sparrow Flips as much as me? We made our way to the Temple of Crota where a fallen guardian lay outside its door. Here we get a cutscene of the ever elusive Exo Stranger who appeared to be spying on us. But then our attention quickly turns back to the door and here we play one of the most infamous destiny lines in history. We've woken the hive. Alright, that was weak. Where's my man Dinklebot? We've woken the hive. Now that's more like it. Dinklebot's delivery of this line is so much better than the Nolan North version. Dinklebot wasn't perfect, but man do I miss him sometimes. If you played Destiny 1 a lot, then you probably ran this mission a bazillion times just like I did to farm kills, for bounties, or to complete certain quests. It's such a good memory to think about just how many times I farmed this area. But just like that, the mission is over. Nice. Alright, I'll shoot nothing. Back to the tower, because in Vanilla's story, every mission forced you to go back to the tower after completion. But here we picked up some quests, and the speaker tried to be a little cheeky and give me a spark of light, but I quickly turned down his offer to boost up my light level, because that would destroy the entire spirit of this series. Spark of light? Again? No, I don't want to use it. Don't accidentally use that spark of light, bro. That's cheating. But now that we're back to the moon, it was time to slay some more hive. There's just something about this game that feels more eerie and more intense in its gameplay than Destiny 2. Ah, sound effects, dude. Something about this game, dude. There is so much. It broken the beckon scanner. Even with its overall simplified mission design, it just had a real sense of fear and weight to its world that emanated very well through the gameplay that Destiny 2 just hasn't been able to replicate. Slowly but surely, our character was becoming more powerful. Before Crota, there were the Swarm Princes, and this mission was the first time we got to use the Sword of Crota for ourselves. Next, we would dive deeper into the Temple of Crota to slay some Siphon Witches who were attempting to devour the Traveler's Light by using one of its own shards. The Witches and the Ogre did not stand a chance though against us. Ogre? Yeah, Ogre. Nope. Nope. Ooh, goodbye, Telford. One of the most memorable missions at the time that really stuck out amongst the rest was the Shrine of Oryx mission. One of the last missions on the moon was the first time Oryx was referenced inside the game, and little did we know we'd encounter the Taken King himself just one year later. The final boss, Sardok, Eye of Oryx stood out as well as having one of the more unique enemy designs in the game. And after killing Sardok, that wrapped up all the moon story missions, leaving only one thing left to do on the moon. Oh fuck, I got no heavy. Before Shadowkeep and the reintroduction to Fogoth as a nightmare, in Destiny 1, players would probably still consider Fogoth to be a nightmare. He was truly scary to fight in Destiny 1. 
causing your screen to shake violently when you were near him. The whole atmosphere and buildup of this ogre being chained down and breaking free was so epic, and in Destiny 2 as a nightmare, didn't quite capture that same sense of fear and intensity that the first game did. I shouldn't have tried to get off both my melee and my But in Destiny 1, I think this fight is done so well, and it might be due to the fact that originally, according to Luke Smith, the Fogoth fight was supposed to be a part of a mega raid at one point during the early stages of development. I'll have a link to a video I made going over that original raid concept as explained by Luke Smith in the description below, so be sure to check it out after you finish this episode. The summoning pits will go down as one of my all-time favorite strikes. Killing Fogoth will just never get old. Come on. <laughs> there it is. Ran into the shotgun. <laughs> Some good loot, dude. After Fogoth, we ended as a level 12 at 67 light, but we weren't quite done with day 2 yet. Even though I was a lowly level 12 with very basic weaponry, I wanted to hop inside the crucible and see if we could make it work. And I'll tell ya, I was not expecting the game to go like this. We didn't quite top the leaderboard, but I'd say considering my level 12 weapon options, we didn't do as bad as I thought we would. After turning in 4 crucible bounties, we went from a level 12 to a level 14 in a matter of seconds, and a final visit in the tower left us as a level 14 with a 75 light level. I'd say another successful day on the new character. As you guys can see, there's a whole lot of guardians still active on Destiny 1, the tower is constantly full, and if you haven't already, maybe come back to D1 for a bit because it's still a pretty great place to chill. But let me know if you're still enjoying this series by leaving a like on the video and letting me know in the comments below. I'm having a really great time with the new character, so expect to see more of these episodes. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, I'll see you in the next one.